few hours later, I was sitting outside, right next to the front door to Star House, making a connection to Byte's Pipbuck again. Hey, Byte. Are you awake? It took a moment for her to respond. I am now. What's up? Not much, really. I just wanted to see if Aura's headed out yet. I said, leaning my head against the wall of the house. I heard her yawn, then said, Yeah, she left a few hours ago. I tried to get in contact with you, but the connection was poor. How are things on your end? Fine, I guess. Staying at a house near Chapel right now with some weird ponies. I said, That eh, sounds right up your alley, she remarked. I could not but chuckle a little, but the humor didn't last. I guess, honestly, they're nice ponies. Though with a lot of issues, from what I can tell, I'm just happy they decided to help me out. I don't know what I'd do here if I didn't have a place to stay. It seems like it rains every five minutes here. What's wrong, Shadow? Bite asked. Nothing's wrong, I said automatically. Listen, you're not the type of pony to just call some pony up like me and just talk about the weather. What's bothering you? She asked, sounding a little annoyed. Well, she always sounded annoyed, but this time it was more than normal. I... I can't seem to sleep. Every time I do, I keep having nightmares about what happened to me while I was trapped in my own head. I replied. It took a moment for her to respond. When she did, for once she sounded like she cared about what she was saying. You went through something no pony should have to. I still don't know everything about what happened to you in the world. But Orichalis explained to us what needed to be done for you to escape. He told you that I had to kill every pony and griffin that I cared about to unlock my cage? I asked. More or less. What matters is that we know a little of what you went through. It's something that's going to haunt you for a long time, if not for the rest of your life. The only way you can get over the pain of what you witnessed and had to do is to accept that it was necessary. It wasn't fun. It wasn't kind. It was brutal. And you had to do it. But it was also fake she said. I sighed and closed my eyes, trying to breathe normally, holding back the tears I could feel building. I know it wasn't real, but that doesn't seem to matter. It felt real. I thought it was, even when I was killing the ponies I loved. Bite sighed, then said, Shadow, sooner or later, you're gonna have to deal with what happened to you. Maybe when you get back, you should just take a break. Take some time to rest up at the Shadow Talons base or in the Lucky Horseshoe. I wish I could, but I have things that I need to do first, I said. Why does it have to be you? You have great friends who love you and would do anything to help you. Have them take a little weight off your shoulders so you can rest. You need a break. That's the only way you're going to hail. Trust me, I've had to deal with something like this after my mom died, Bite said. It's... Not the same thing, bite, I said, raising my voice. You don't have to yell at me, Shadow, she rebutted. I sighed and shook my head. You're right, bite. I'm sorry. You'd better be, she teased before sounding serious again. Anyway, I know it's not the same thing, but I still have to get over my pain just like you have to. I didn't need to remind you of that, that I hate your mother and your uncle because of what they did to my mom. But right now, I'm working with them and putting my pain aside so we can do what needs to be done. That's what I have to do to heal. You need to do your own thing you need to heal, too. You can take a step back and just be Shadow Star. Let the courier go for a while and just be who you are, Bite said. The courier is who I am, and once I'm back, ponies will expect me to keep helping, I said. Right now, Albany Pegasus thinks you're dead. Use that to heal. Don't put that duster back on for a while and just rest. Maybe try acting your age for once and stop trying to be an adult so much. Sooner or later, you need to realize that you're still very young, just like me. And you could be a little filly for a while, Bite said. That filly is wise beyond her years sometimes. But I couldn't help the bitterness that came out of my voice as I said, Bite, I am an adult. She cut me off. In Stable 28, yes. Out here, no. If you grew up in Trotsden, you'd still be a filly. You'd have to wait another two years before you'd be given more responsibilities. 
Your stable needed ponies that were younger to help keep the place running, from what I heard from Milkshake. The age to be considered an adult is younger to help with that. I know you think you can deal with the same things as any grown pony does, but you still haven't hit that age of maturity yet to understand things that ponies like Stardust or Windthrasher would. You still act with more emotion than common sense, and because of that you put your friends and your own life into danger. So please, at least think about what I'm saying. When you get home, rest, stop being the courier for a while, and just have a happy life. Bite, I can't until I get Aquila out of me, I said sadly. I know that, and don't worry about her. Grim's got a plan that we know will work, she said. That made me perk up. You do? What is it? Sorry, can't tell you. Grim says that if you know what she's doing, Aquila will too. You're gonna have to trust us. Okay, she said. I sighed again and gave in. Fine. If you think it's for the best, then I'll trust you. Good. Well, if you're done, I need to go back to sleep, she said with a yawn. One more thing and I'll let you go, I said. She sighed. Make it quick. You said you've been talking to Milkshake? I take it she made it to the Shadow Talons base? I asked. She yawned again. Her and Balefire, yes. The rest of your stable is staying with the queen. Or I will fill you in when you meet with her. And how's Windthrasher doing? I asked. Bite sighed again. That's a discussion for another day. Bite, tell me, I said. Fine. Windthrasher is still pissed at you right now. Once you, we told her that we found you, she almost flew off before Aura could just leave, just so she could have a, give you a piece of her mind. Bite said. Listen, when you get back, you have to talk to her. And don't start it off with I'm sorry. Just listen to her and take whatever anger she's going to throw at you. Trust me, it'll help both of you. She's that pissed, huh? I said in a laughing tone. Damn, she'll be scarier than she is now. Yeah, she is. Stardust had to stop her from going with Aura. We had to send Solstice with Aura because Windthrasher kept trying to say that she needed to go with her to help keep Aura safe. She wouldn't stop until Aura finally said she was bringing Solstice to watch her back. Even then, it took everything Stardust had to keep the bat here. She said, Now can I go back to sleep? Yeah, and thank you, Bite, I said, wanting to know more, but I didn't want to push her. Whatever, just don't get yourself killed, and get some sleep, she said as she cut the transmission. I yawned, then shook my head as my eyes started to droop. Sorry, Bite. I can't sleep. Not yet. And with that, I got up and headed back into Star House. I just got inside the door when Rampage almost bowled me over as she tried to run out the door. Ah, sorry, Shadow. Gotta run. She said, looking back over my shoulder. Hurry up, Psycho Shy. We don't have all night. Why do I have to come? Psychoshai said from the kitchen. Because I said so. Now move, Rampage said before heading out the door. I hate it when she does that, Psychoshai said, flying past me and almost knocking me down as she followed Rampage. What was that all about? I asked Glory, who was sitting at the kitchen table with Scotch. Scotch was the one who answered. Glory got a message from Blackjack. It wasn't long, but said something about Black Pony Mountain. They're heading off to find Lacuna so they can teleport here. Glory looked like she had just woken up. She looked over to me, saying, She sounded like she was in trouble. From what you told me about her, she can take care of herself, I said. Normally, yes. But she's going through some things. She almost died a few days ago, and she hasn't given herself time to rest since then. She's not at her best right now. I just know it. Glory said with a sigh. I'm sure she'll be okay. Rampage will find her, I'm sure of it. I said, going over to the mare, who looked like Rainbow Dash and giving her a hug from behind. How about we find something to keep your mind off Blackjack for a while? 
She looked up at me and gave me a small smile. Okay, that's probably a good idea anyway. Thank you, Shadow. I shrugged. It's no problem. A few hours later, I found myself sitting with Glory, Scotch, Boo, and P-21 outside of Star House, looking through Mom's notes on the Mark II. Glory thought it would be a good idea after what she learned about me from my quest. I was surprised by how much information I had found about the Mark II and the projects Mom had made notes about over the years. The sad part was that none of it helped me one bit. I was going to have to head into town soon to see if I could find my uncle's notes. Maybe Charity would know something about him and his notes. I was just finishing up with a log Mom left about the Forgotten Library when Scotch said, Hey, Glory, I think there's another transmission coming from Blackjack. Really? Glory said, jumping to her hooves. Play it! Okay. She just told him to get the others and hasn't said anything else yet. I was listening on the ear bloom when it came through. Scotch said, pulling a said device from her ear and switching her pit buck to play the station she was listening to. A moment passed. Then I heard a mare's voice coming out of it. From the look on Glory's face, it had to be Blackjack. Hey, every pony, It's me, Blackjack. I hope you're actually getting this. Knowing my luck, I'm sending it straight to the Seekers. So I'll be quick. She paused, then kept going. I just wanted to tell you that you were right, Glory. I shouldn't have left. I shouldn't have run away. I should have been strong enough to face my fears with you rather than tearing halfway across the valley. I know that letting me go off my own couldn't have been easy, but I want you to know that I'm better now. I have friends helping me, and... and I've started to try and deal with my problems. I know. Sounds like an impossible task. Shooting things is easier. Running is easier. But in the end, I hurt people who didn't deserve it. New things to atone for. Like Scoodle. P-21, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you how goddess is damn brave and awesome you are. You actually had the guts to do something I couldn't. You're doing the right thing. And I hope that you get to have something none of the stallions ever got to have. A family. I guess that makes you unique in two ways. Blackjack said, chuckling a little. I know you're hurting right now, but I know, I just know, you're tough enough to stick it out. No pony who follows me around for a month without going crazy can do anything. She paused again, almost like she was thinking over what she was going to say next, keeping all of us on edge of our seats. Scotch tape? I hope you're helping Glory and keeping an eye on P-21. I know he's not the most talkative pony. I know he's probably frowning right now, but he loves you. I'm sure of it. Please be patient. I know you've waited a long time for him, but it'll take him a while to open up. She paused for a second. As she did, I looked over to see P-21, who was indeed frowning. Then she continued. And yes, Boo, I'm here. I'm fine. You be a good pony, too. Don't make a mess for glory. I know you're a real pony, boo. You'll show us all sooner or later. The white mare was looking at Scotch's pip muck like she was trying to figure out why she couldn't see Blackjack. Glory, I want you to know that I love you. I don't care who you look like. I love you. I always will. And I hope when I see you again, I can show you just how much I do. I saw Glory get teary-eyed as she said that. That expression changed a second later as Blackjack went from being sweet to saying something so stupid that it made me look smart as hell. At least when it came to how a mare friend talked to another. I met a guy. He's pretty not quiet, but he's nice. He helped me through what happened in the boat. Real champion in bed. Something about flyers. I know you're not into guys, but I hope the two of you can be friends. Glory's face went blank as she whispered, Champion in bed? She didn't. She didn't get a chance to say more because Blackjack, the mayor who just said and did the most stupid thing a mayor could do then, decided to end her transmission with, Well, I should probably get going. Talk again soon. Hopefully everything will work out and I'll be back right away. Take care. I looked down at Scotch Tape's pit buck in horror after the transmission went out. 
I was about to say something when P-21 started saying, Glory, wait! The door to Star House slammed as Glory walked back inside. Fuck, P-21 said. Blackjack is going to be in a world of hurt when she gets back. She's not a very smart pony, is she? I asked. I mean, who does something like that? A mare from Stable 99, Scotch said with a sigh. You think your stable was messed up, Shadow? You have no ideas what I was like. Do I really want to know? I asked. P-21 answered. No, you really don't. I should go check on Glory. He's going to need some pony to hug, I think. I could see that he didn't want to do that, so I said. I'll talk to her. No, I should. I'm from 99-2, and I can explain to her why Blackjack thinks the way she does. He said quickly. Maybe, but right now I think she needs a pony who understands her side of it, more than hearing excuses for a mare who doesn't seem to understand how a true relationship works. If I can't get to, to her to talk, then you can try. I said, getting up, then looking back at P-21. Let me ask you this first. Does Blackjack really love Glory? It's hard to tell with her, but I think she does, P-21 said. Of course she does. She just doesn't understand things are different out here, Scotch said. Works for me, I said, then headed into Star House. Boo followed me for some reason. It only took me a moment to find Glory's room. I knocked, and right away I heard sobs from Glory as she yelled, Go away! Glory, it's me, Shadow. Can I come in? I asked. I just want to be left alone, she said. I sighed. I'm sure you do. But you also need to talk to some pony first. I might be able to help. For a long moment, she didn't answer. When she did, she sounded defeated. Fine. I opened the door and walked in, Boo following me. I closed the door once I was in and found Glory laying on the bed, her face in a pillow. I moved over to the side of her bed and sat on it right next to her. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Blackjack wasn't thinking straight or something stupid like that. I know you don't want to hear it. So I'm just going to sit here and if you feel like talking, then talk. If you need a hug, then I'm here. If you just want to stay quiet, then that's fine too. And that's what I did. I sat there for a long time listening to Glory as she sniffed and muttered to herself. After about an hour, she finally turned her face towards me, saying quietly, Why does she have to do stuff like that? I don't know her, so I can't really answer that for her, I said. I know, she responded, turning onto her back and looking up at the peeling part of the ceiling. Blackjack's stable was a horrible place to ponies like me and maybe you. I don't know what your stable was like, but for her, it was normal. The mares were the only ones allowed to have jobs, and the only ones to have the freedom for the most part. The stallions were treated like nothing more than tools. They were used to breed, and that was all. Kept on drugs to keep them tame and easy to control. They only had 20 unicorn stallions, and 20 earth ponies, on the breeding queue. Once another male was old enough to breed, the rest were bumped up, and the last one in the line would become 21 on the queue and be put down. My jaw dropped open at that. But isn't P-21 from her stable? Then it hit me. That was his name. Oh my goddesses. So he was meant to die? She nodded. Yeah. Blackjack saved him, though. Kind of. Mostly they just escaped together when their stable was attacked. My point to telling you this was that for her stable... Sex was just something you did when you wanted to have a little fun or get away from work for a while. Sometimes it was so they could have a foal, but not much else. It sounds to me like she didn't really have much of a concept of how relationships work, I said. She chuckled and started to cry, as she did. You have no idea. But I thought that after all this time of being with her out of Stable 99 that she'd start to understand that you can't just go having sex with random ponies because you think it'll help you feel better. I leaned back and laid across her hind legs, looking up at the ceiling too. 
I've always seen sex as something that could be fun too, but scary to attempt. She looked down at her body, at asking me, So are you a virgin? I laughed. No, but I only lost mine a few weeks back. Got drunk for the first time and woke up with a strange rock star in a casino. I don't even remember much about what we did. What I do remember was fun, though I was ashamed of myself. Later I met Silver Snip, and we had a fun couple of times. Once with another mayor, then Aura. And that's all, though. You sound like Blackjack. You've been with, what, four partners in a few weeks? She asked. I rolled my eyes. The difference is that I wasn't looking for it. The singer was a one-time thing. Silver was my mare friend, for a couple of days, but she loved me and wanted to show me how much. Then the other mare joined in. Again, I was drunk. Aura was kind of a surprise, to be honest. I was going to ask you how that happened. I've heard of griffins and ponies being together before, but never met any ponies in a relationship like that, she said, sounding a little better. At least my strange sex life was getting her off her own problems. I think I liked her not long after she joined us, but I tried putting that off as me being stupid. When Aura first joined us, she wasn't very nice. She was hostile with stardust all the time, always had to prove she was stronger than every pony, and she never seemed to be happy. I was scared to even think about her in that way. I sat with a sigh, laying my head on her hind legs. Let me guess, that changed the longer you were around her? She asked while laying back. In a way, yes. She changed some as we traveled. She cheered up more. She started talking to me about her past. Hell, she even told Stardust not long ago, after she started traveling with us, that she liked me. She was hinting for a while that she wanted me, or at least wanted to know if I liked her. The problem was that I had just lost Silver. I was being hunted by the Enclave. I thought I was losing my mind, and so much more was going on that I never stopped to see what I should have done. It wasn't until she almost died that I saw how I felt. Then I blew up Mill City Tower, I said. For such a young mare, you've been through a lot, Glory said. I felt her hoof rub against my mane. I've learned to deal with it, I said, closing my eyes and enjoying her stroking my mane. I knew this wasn't her trying to make a pass at me or anything like that. I could tell that Glory loved Blackjack even after what she pulled with that stallion. I loved Aura, and nothing was going to change that either. No, Glory just wanted some pony to understand her feelings, since her own mare friend couldn't, and I think she just liked being able to be herself without worrying if the pony she was talking to wanted her for more. And she laughed. No, you haven't. But I'm sure you think you have. You caught me. Deep down, I'm a mess. I said, trying to make a joke, but failing. Glory seemed to have a knack for seeing past bullshit. Yes, you are. And you really should start to fix that mess before it becomes impossible for you to do so. Doctor's orders, she said. We stayed like that for a while, both of us trying to ignore our shit for a little while, at least. After some time passed, I heard Boo rummaging through Glory's stuff. A moment later, Glory said, Boo! Put that down. I looked up to see the white mare holding a large envelope in her muzzle. She was standing a few inches away from me. I reached out with my magic and took the envelope from her muzzle and saw that it had two words on it. Two blackjack. I looked over at Glory, who was blushing for some reason, and asked, What's this? Nothing, really. Just, uh, <laughs> well, a love letter. Kind of. That I wrote to Blackjack while we were in Manhattan when she almost died. I was going to give it to her when she got better, but decided not to, she replied. Why not? Maybe something like this will help her understand your own feelings more, I said. No, it's not really meant for that. It's more of an open-if-something-happens-to-me kind of letter. If she reads it now, she'll just think something's wrong with me and... She'll never leave me alone, Glory said, laying back down. You can just throw it in the garbage. Not like it'll leave me much help now. Blackjack has a new guy friend. I don't think you should throw it away. 
Who knows? It might help. I said. Trust me, it won't. But if you won't toss it, then at least put it back in my bags. Please. She said, closing her eyes. I sighed again, then got up to do just that. I looked down at the letter again. It was sealed, so I couldn't just open it and see what she had to say to her mare, Fred. But still, I had a feeling that she needed to read this. If not now, then later. Still, she asked me to toss it, so I'd do what she wanted me to. I dropped a letter in the trash. I was about to go back to the bed, but Boo went and picked it back up, then nudged me with a letter. Sighing, I took it from her and threw it away again. But Boo just kept picking it up and nudging me again. It was like she was trying to tell me something. I took the letter again and moved it towards the trash, but watched Boo as I did. She frowned as I moved closer to the bin. So I moved the letter towards Glory, who was still laying there with her eyes closed. Again, Boo frowned. Not knowing what this odd mare wanted, I picked up my saddlebags, which I dropped by the door when I came in. Then, moving the letter towards it, Boo smiled and nodded. Something in the way she looked at me told me she wasn't going to leave me alone until I did what she wanted me to. So I slipped the letter into my own bags. I could always toss it later when Boo wasn't around. That way I wouldn't feel like I was stealing from Glory. I moved back to the bed, then plopped down hard next to Glory, making her yelp. Hey, what was that for? I smiled at her. Let's get your mind off Blackjack and her crap for a while. Shadow, I'm sorry. I may be angry at Blackjack for what she did, but I'm not going to sleep with you just to get back at her, she said, though her cheeks did blush. I was almost tempted to see how long that would last. I was sure, just by the way she was blushing, that she'd thought about it. I hadn't, but I had fun. Awesome, smart, and don't forget sexy Griffin. A Griffin I wouldn't ever cheat on. I loved her too much, even if the mare next to me did look like a mare I thought was the coolest mare from the war. So I pushed the thought of tempting her to the back of my mind, then placed it in a box. Then I buried the box, built a house on top of that box, then threw away the key in the deep ocean on Equus. That's not what I meant. I mean, let's get out of this room and find something that'll keep you distracted for a while. I said. She blushed harder. I mean, I should have known that. I'm sorry. Don't be. Honestly, it's fine. I said. Okay, let's head back downstairs. She said, getting off the bed and heading out of the room. Her rear shifting back and forth as she did. Okay. Put angry aura in front of the house, cover the box with a thoughts of tempting this not Rainbow Dash mare. Yep, that worked. Angry aura is just as good, if not better, than a cold shower.